Welcome, G-Man Live fans, to another segment of Eagles Patriots Review right here on G-Man Live. Reporting to you from your commander-in-chief seat, G-Man. Now, let's go ahead and break this down. So, what we got here is a situation of... Do answer this question. Do you or do you not give a shit about this game on Sunday? Now, as you guys know, I put up on my Facebook page, I wasn't feeling all that good. I uh, had a rough time down in, in Florida. Came back. My ass was knocked out. So I was down for a while. Having said that, um, I saw it. I saw, hey, my eyes do not deceive me. I saw it. I saw a team that just mailed it in, mailed it in, kind of like Happy Gilmore. They just tap it in, just a little tappy, just tap, tap, tap a -roo. Well, yeah, they just went tap, 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 and the ball went in the hole. And in football parlance, the ball went in the end zone against us. So where does that leave us? I'll tell you exactly where that leaves us. Right now, we are 4-7. and seven. That is fucking bad. And that is goddamn ridiculous because, hey, Chip. Like, what the fuck? You know, if we just would have gotten rid of Chip and kept everybody else, we'd be 7-4 and four probably or 8-3. and three. Because, look, I know Nick Foles got benched, but in this system, he was doing fine. And by the way, Andy Reid would have been having him do just fine as well. We can trash Reed, but the dude knows quarterbacks and knows how to coach. Remember, he was a quarterback's coach, and he won a cup with Brett Favre. Well, I like to call it the cup, but he called, he won a bowl. So, LaShawn McCoy, having a good season. Jeremy Macklin, having a good season. Deshaun Jackson, love him or hate him. I got my detractors out there. Having a good season. And then this is the Redskins. By the way, the, the first place Redskins, at five, I know the division sucks. I get it. But they are still first place Redskins. And Deshaun Jackson having a good season. So Macklin, Jackson, LaShawn McCoy, all gone. Evan Mathis, by the way. Everybody watch that game? D uh, Denver against New England? Yeah. <laughs> the Broncos beat the Patriots. Pow. And who was playing that? That uh, left guard, Evan fucking Mathis. Yep. So, we don't have any of those guys. Toss out Nick Foles, and the uh, elimination is complete. So, we got rid of all them, and we got a bunch of fucking stiffs. We got Chip Kelly, stiff. Alonzo, real stiff. Dude can't fucking make a play to save his life. Uh, that interception was like 100 years ago uh, in the end zone against the Falcons. The only guy that we had that really was good was someone that Chip didn't even know, Jordan Hicks. Now, how's that break down when we get to New England? Here's how that breaks down. All right, you're going to get Bradford back uh, probably at like 80%, but it's his non-throwing arm, you know, so his right arm, you know, he's good. A uh, couple things about this game that are very, very interesting. All right, now, look, this is the kind of game where you're like, Oh, man. We don't even give a shit about the season because, like, at this point, Eagle fans are kind of like, all right, fuck it, man. Let's get that fucking top-round pick. Let's get Ronnie Stanley in here. Let's get ourselves a nice tackle and start building this lineup, kick Chip the fuck out, and start with a new quarterback because you got to get a new quarterback because Sam Bradford do what Sam Bradford does. Like, dude, Sam, I love you, dude, but you 500. And the famous words of my boy E-Rock, who doesn't show any love back to me, by the way. It'd be kind of nice if he did. You know, Philadelphia did subscribe to my site, and you could actually return the favor. Think about it. Uh, so, on the offensive side of the ball, the Patriots are beat up. Like, you kind of get the Patriots at the first time. I mean, if, if we had players, this we, we, could, we could win this game. Brady don't have his boys. You know, Gronk, out. Julian Edelman, out. Amendola. Out. The dude on defense, Hightower, out. Uh, offensive line is in shambles. They got two guys out. Everybody's out. They're all like, yo, we fucking don't think we even need the Eagles. I mean, they're 10-point favorites, by the way. So, 
the Eagles actually have options. I mean, that you, coverage wise, like hey, you you dealing with you're covering like Chandler on the tight end spot and a fucking dude named Brandon LaFell. Dude went to LSU, not bad, but he ain't nothing to worry about. I mean, you, you sweating Brandon LaFell, you got bigger problems than that. So, how does that all break down? Because, like, I mean, I'm distraught. Maybe I was lovesick, you know? Maybe I was lovesick. Maybe I was like, I've been holding on to you guys for so long, and you guys just stamp me and stamp me and stamp me, and I just can't take it anymore. I was lovesick, and that's why you all haven't heard from me for about 10 days. But having said that, we got to go back to the review. So it doesn't matter about the Cowboys and the Giants and the Redskins and all that other shit. So my question to all my Eagle fans is, do you or do you not want to make the playoffs and be a first round out? Our offensive line is so fucking bad. We could probably pull five guys from Philly and those guys could do a whole lot better than these five fucking stiffs. And yes, that includes Jason Kelsey. I got one guy on this line that's pulling his weight, Lane Johnson. Jason Peters gets a pass because the dude's injured and he's 34 years old and he's already a Hall of Famer. He don't have to prove me nothing. The other fucking stiffs, if they're on this team next year, I want, I'm, we're going to lead a little revolt. We're going to go down to the link. We're all going to sit there with signs and we're going to hold up signs and say, Chip, it's the O-line Stupid. I believe that was like a political phrase back in the 90s. It's the O-line. Stupid. Say that. Let's sing it. It's the O-line. Stupid. It's the O-line. Stupid. Yeah. You got to have an O-line if you want to play in this league. And we got like, I don't know, three guys that can't even fucking like move. How are you going to get a running game going? Yes, DeMarco Murray is slow. So the key to winning the game you have to be able to get a running attack going because if you do, you keep the Patriot offense off the field. Their D is like is good, but they're banged up. Their actually their D is actually not that bad. Their their corners are good. Butler and then the other kid, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, they're not bad. Their linebackers are okay. Gerard Mayo's good, but I mean these guys aren't like amazing. They're good. They're just system guys. Um, and their their Ninkovich is like their best linebacker. So I mean, with with Dante Hightower out, so um, everybody in the media's got this one at like thirty eight seventeen, forty five seventeen, fifty to seventeen, fifty to ten. I've seen forty eight to ten. I've seen a lot of things, and I've gotten a lot of comments about this too. Here's the deal, all right. And I'm not gonna make this video much longer because I know you guys, you know, you got to break it down. Um, this game, we're not going to win this game, but it's going to be a lot closer than people think it's going to be. You heard it here first. The Eagles are actually going to get up for this game because this is like, you know, you get a chance to test your medal and and you do it against the Patriots. So uh, I think that 10-point spread, I'm not buying that. Uh, I, I don't necessarily, I'm not saying it's going to be within 10 points, but I'm saying there's going to be times throughout this game where the Eagles are actually going to be really close. They might even have an early lead or something like that and then lose it and then get it back and then lose it. But it's going to be a lot, lot closer. I'm expecting more of like a, you know, like a like a 30 to like 20 game, something like that. Like I don't I don't expect the the Patriots to run away with it. That 10 point spread might hold, but I don't expect this to be like this 45-17 stuff. Uh-uh. They just don't have they don't they don't have the weapons and quite frankly, I think you're going to see Eagles get into the Patriots backfield. So, if this team wants to play. Now, if they just decide to mail it in, hey, 45-17 is on the table. So, look, guys, there's actually some good things here. Going 40, you know, like going 4-8 and eight and then losing, you know, look, we finish season 4-12, and 12, we get a nice round, we get a nice first overall pick. And that's kind of what this team needs more than anything. They need to draft high. So, that will break it down uh, pretty much on this game anything that you guys want to know put it in the comments below and if you like what you see and you want to see more put it in the comments below and i will gladly go ahead and comment uh until then uh yep i'll probably be going to the bills game anybody wants to say hello to me come over if you're at the uh, stadium i'll probably be at Wachovia lot c1 uh you guys can check me out there 
Otherwise, uh, hey, you know, another Sunday is going to be upon us very soon. So enjoy the game. Until then, this is your Commander-in-Chief G-Man signing off saying, Go Burns, and I will catch you after the game on Sunday. Pow!